G'day, Ice Cream Lovers. Steve Christensen's my name. Again, broadcasting from the home office here, St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, just a hop, skip and a jump away down the road from Scoop School. Um, and uh, hopefully you've watched the first video that we put out uh, a couple of days ago about the 10 things that you can do as a business owner uh, while you've got some downtime, perhaps, or in preparation for the season uh, coming up. Now, a lot of our content, as we mentioned before, uh, is directed towards uh, ice cream shop owners, but the food service industry generally is pretty well struggling right now. A lot of food service places can do carry out uh, and delivery. Um, so if you're in that boat, that's fantastic. I hope that things are going well for you. If you do have some time to kind of recollect and not pull your hair out, uh, we put uh, a list of 10 things together that you could do uh, during this time to prepare while you've got some downtime. I've linked that video here below. You can have a look at that. Um, look, the, I won't go in particular order. We mentioned in this in that video that we were going to put together another video basically for each of those 10 things. Now, the first of which was to uh, keep up to date with the stimulus packages. Uh, and as a result of, or at the time of filming this video, um, the CARE Act has just been put into place a couple of days ago. We actually have a webinar with um, a representative from the Small Business Administration in the next couple of days. So if you forgive me, um, I, I just want to skip that one for the time being because that's a very fluid situation uh, and that's kind of moving all the time. But the second point was looking at food cost calculations and taking the time to kind of look at where you are at on your food cost or your cost of goods. Now, um, there's a few different things that you can do in order to um, facilitate that. I've got some good tools for you to use here today. But primarily, the best tool you can have right now is something like this. This is an invoice from a supplier uh, that basically gives a list of the things that we have been uh, ordering, our recent orders. Uh, and this is a very important document because a lot of times... You know, we tell people in the food service industry, particularly the ice cream industry, to really make sure that you're up to date, that you know what your cost per ounce is or what your product cost is for your menu items. So as I look at this uh, opening inventory sheet here or a sheet from a supplier here in St. Louis, pop my glasses up, uh, I've got things here like uh, cake batter dry mix, um, a case with 12 two and a half pound bags, uh, $78.76. This is from a couple of years ago. Um, I've got here cheesecake base. I've got Dutch chocolate vanilla. I've got peanuts, one uh, 10 pound box of peanuts. I've got some water ice base here, pina colada flavoring. Uh, I've got some waffle cone base. I've got some chocolate chip cookie dough. All of the things on here I need um, basically to calculate out or to get a more accurate look at what exactly my cost per element is when I'm putting together some of these menu items. It's very, very important. Um, so for example, here I've got six number 10 cans of hot fudge, a uh, Sunday Supreme milk hot fudge. Uh, this invoice says $84.65. Now I do want you, and this is important, if you have a freight cost or you're looking at getting uh, an extra cost to have that product landed at your business, then you should factor that in. You shouldn't put that in a miscellaneous column. Really, when it comes to costing, you shouldn't have a miscellaneous column anyway. You want to make sure that you account for every single cost. So at the end of this invoice, if it says uh, shipping for all of this was 80 bucks, uh, then you really should divide that up so you know exactly what this product cost you landed at your business. Uh, so you can take your hot fudge, you can take your number six, uh, uh, a six number 10 cans and basically narrow that down to a per ounce cost. Now contact your food service provider, contact the distributors, contact your broadline distributor. Many of them will cut that product down to a per ounce base. Or if they don't cut that down specifically to the per ounce base, they'll tell you that in this particular box or in this particular can, there are 50, 100, 200, one ounce, two ounce, three ounce servings. You really want to knuckle it down to a per ounce serving because everything we do in the ice cream industry in particular is done by weight. So 
as you kind of bounce this down and start to go through the process of what makes up your menu items, a lot of these things are done by weight. So if I'm looking at, um, let's say, a, um, a turtle sundae, for example, and I've got elements in that turtle sundae of um, your ice cream, your uh, hot fudge, your caramel fudge, your pecans, your whipped cream, your cherry, the cup, the spoon, the napkin, perhaps the lid, everything that goes into that particular turtle sundae needs to be accounted for. So finding out from this invoice or finding out if you don't have the invoice, talk to your suppliers and say, hey, what's my current cost on a uh, 50 pound box of pecans, salted, roasted and buttered pecans? They're the pecans that you should be using uh, in your uh, turtle sundae as a side note. Uh, so, so find out what it is per box, break that down per ounce so you know exactly how many ounces you put on each of your particular sundaes in this uh, case, a turtle sundae. This is why portion control, we're always talking about portion control. It's so important because if you figure that this sundae has one or two ounces of pecans in it, or this ice cream recipe in and of itself, your butter pecan recipe, has uh, half a cup, one full cup, or by weight of, of, uh, of pecans, then you know exactly what the cost should be. If the kids are over scooping, then that's crushing your projections as to the profitability of that particular product. So again, all of these costings go hand in hand with your portion control. So um, just popping down onto my screen now, if I have a look here um, at my menu. So these are PDFs of the menus that we use uh, in Scoop School. Happy to send them to you. We've had a few people ask about them. Uh, I'll actually load these up onto our online platform scoopskill.online. The toolbox is free currently. Um, we used to charge $75 to access that toolbox. It's free. So go to scoopskill.online. There's a lot of really good documents there. These menus are there. So for example, I should know exactly as I break down my menu, uh, my first panel here talks about a classic Sunday. That particular image there or that product, I should know exactly what that cost me. My cup, my ice cream, my caramel, my, uh, my uh, uh, crushed or nut topping, my whipped cream, my cherry, even that waffle wedge should be accounted for. Napkin and a spoon as well. And don't forget the lid. Sometimes we all often forget a lid. And if you're in a situation where um, you don't offer the lid, but if someone says, hey, can I get that to go, you'll put it on. You need to do a bit of a guesstimate as to how many lids you would go through. So if it's if it's one lid for every two Sundays, or if it's every second Sunday you give out a lid with it, then you'll want to factor in half of that lid cost for every single Sunday. So if a lid cost me ten cents, um, I would charge or factor in my uh, accounting or in my food cost at every every different uh, Sunday that I sell would be five cents. You get it? it's kind of half a lid. Uh, or a third of a lid if you're giving away a lid with every three. Uh, again, scroll through this menu, have a look at, you need to know all of these add-ins, these toppings, uh, you need to know exactly what your price per ounce is on everything. Now there's a little bit of time here, you gotta do a bit of research, but again, this is a great time to do it. You really need to dedicate probably three hours, four hours maybe. You'll be so glad after you've done it. Your featured Sundays, again, uh, all of these here, you'll need to figure out what your container cost is, what your product cost is, and your garnishing, and again, spoon, napkin, and a half, third of a lid, um, all the concretes, banana splits, all of your take-home products, very, very important. Now, how do you go through the process of figuring out what the food cost actually is? Well, we have right here a handy-dandy ice cream food cost uh, spreadsheet that we've put together, which basically has every single ice cream product known to man on it, uh, with a few spelling mistakes. Let's rename this one. Concrete. Concrete. There we go. So, for example, uh, let's look at a regular Sunday. Uh, and what I want you to do is go to scoopschool.online, uh, and again, the link will be below here. Download this form in its Excel format. Uh, and start plugging in the products that you have uh, or the ingredient costs that you have. So let's say, for example, in this case here, my Sunday regular, I've got two, two uh, number 12 scoops, which is uh, five ounces. 
Um, so I've got five ounces of product. If right now my mix cost is at six cents an ounce, and that's what this is here. So I've got five. The unit is one ounce. My unit actually for my ice cream mix is six cents an ounce. So I pop that in here and my mix cost here is 30 cents. Now, um, if my mix cost went up to, let's say 6.5, um, then when I X out of this, you can see that this went up just a tiny little bit. I've got uh, two pumps of, uh, what does that say? Toppings, uh, two ounces at eight cents an ounce, again, if you find out recently that there's been a little bit of a price increase uh, and this is now 10 cents, you would make this 10 cents, which again, if you look at this box right here and I tab that out, goes up to 20 cents. I've got a little bit of whipped cream, eight cents of whipped cream. My cherry here is about uh, two cents, way too, too cheap. That's gone up, let's say that's uh, eight cents. Um, my Sunday cup is uh, five and a half cents. Let's put that up to uh, 10 cents. Uh, my dome lid, again, I've got 0.25. So that means that in my calculation, every four uh, products or every four of these products that I serve, I give away a lid. I've got one cent in there. My teaspoon's at one cent. My napkin is at uh, two cents. This is my total. And you can see here that as you plug all of these different numbers in, uh, you get this total. In this box here is your proposed selling price. So right now we've done a bit of a food cost calculation here on our Sunday. We've got all of these different uh, numbers plugged in. Right now, if we continue to sell that particular regular Sunday for $2.50, it has a food cost percentage of 32.83%. Now that's way too cheap for a, uh, for a five ounce Sunday. So let's bump the price up to, let's say $3.20. 3.2 and you'll see when I tab out of this the food cost dropped there to 25% so this is why a document like this is so important it's it's a multi-pronged operation you've got to go through these invoices you've got to start punching that information in its per ounce form into a spreadsheet like this and then you've got to basically populate this spreadsheet with all of the different products that you have on your menu and you can see here, all of my toppings down below here, I've actually listed how much they are. So if I have to add a strawberry topping, it's seven cents an ounce. My caramel is nine cents an ounce. My hot fudge is seven cents an ounce. And so here's a bit of a breakdown of all of the different products that you get in. You plug them into the spreadsheet here so you have a much better look at your food cost. Now, when we talk about food cost percentage, and when you talk about cost of goods, that's generally over a period of time, granted. But if you don't know exactly how much you are charging, uh, first off, how much you, you are, are spending on a particular product to make it, and then not tweaked it so that it falls within this realm of uh, not being too inexpensive and not being overly expensive, unless you have that detail, there's no way known that you can have a really good grasp on the finances of your business. And you can see here, uh, everything from cones, cups, specialty sundae, strawberry shortcake, turtle sundae, caramel cashew. We've got shakes here. We've got malts, even down to pints and quarts. So um, do yourself a favor. Open up two, three hours. Uh, put some BGs on, some not light uh, classic movies, uh, mu music, I should say. In fact, um, my wife here has found a 70s station that's always playing in the background in the house. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, pop music was on the other day. I don't even know who, who sings it, but I haven't heard that song for years. In any case, I digress. Uh, put some music on, lock yourself in the office here, go through and figure out exactly what all of these costs are per ounce, plug them into the spreadsheet, get a better idea so that you know exactly where you're at when it comes to the process of costing and then um, uh, actually selling your products. I put this in the uh, urgent but not important list of things to do. Um, it's something that you really should be doing look, primarily every season at least. But when you get your invoices in, you should be always looking at them and just jumping onto this spreadsheet to make sure that you're aware that if there is a price hike in pecans like there are right now, that you've got it factored into your pricing of your products. 
That's all for this video. Again, um, look for the coming videos where we go through and explain a little bit more in detail. We flesh out the 10 things that you can do um, during this uh, COVID-19 crisis. Folks, if you have any questions whatsoever, drop us a line, steve at scoopschool.com. Have a look at scoopschool.com. And again, uh, scoopschool.online will have that toolbox that has all of these documents in there for you. Keep on scooping, folks, and we'll see you in the next video.